Hello. Welcome to my continuing series of videos on some of the basic ideas of sociology. We've now finished a brief introduction to the important concept of socialization and we'll now look at a new topic. Uh, this is going to be the first of a series of videos on social action and interaction. I will deal here with the concept of human beings as social actors and then move on to discuss social groups, social status and roles. We are all social actors, whether wittingly or unwittingly. A very large part of what we do in our lives is done with others in mind, as we seek to communicate with them, impress them or influence them. Even when we're on our own, we may be preparing for an anticipated social action, as with a young man or woman going for a job interview or waiting for the arrival of a first date, who may be fussing over their clothes and appearance well before the anticipated event. Moreover, when we meet with others, our social actions become interactions as we respond to the actions of those we meet with and they respond to our actions. The kinds of interactions we have with others vary greatly. They may be pleasant or unpleasant, exciting or boring, constructive or destructive. Some interactions are transient, whilst others last a lifetime. Human relationships are defined by the kinds of interaction they involve, whether it be between husband and wife, parents and children, bosses and employees, or groups of students and co-workers. We may work together to accomplish common objective, as in cooperation, or work with others to help each other accomplish varied objectives, that is exchange, I help you and you help me. Or we may be in competition, each seeking to possess or control certain resources a rivalry which may follow established rules, or lead to conflict, or be settled through negotiation. Some interactions involve coercion of one party by the other. Sometimes one party simply withdraws from the interaction, either on a temporary or a permanent basis. Our social actions and interactions are often framed in terms of the social statuses we occupy and their assigned social roles. As such, we may be compared to actors in a stage play who are performing our assigned role, a metaphor famously developed by the sociologist Irving Goffman in his dramaturgical model of social life. Our performance is both a means by which we give meaning to our lives and a statement of who we are to those who observe it. Particularly in work roles, for example a teacher, a doctor, we present an image of ourself in the character of our role, along with the appropriate costume, props and manner of interaction, as with the businessman's suit, the hospital doctor's white coat, stethoscope and serious demeanour. The office or other setting in which we appear may also express our role, whether it be the imposing desk and opulent furnishings of the boss, the academic tomes displayed in the professor's bookcase, or the professional certificates found on the walls of the doctor's surgery. The performance forms part of a total social setting, the front which defines who we are in that role and communicates to others how we expect them to interact with us. There may be an artificiality to such impression management, but whether formally, as with the bedside manner taught to medical students in some countries, or informally, as through a process of socialization into a new job, many people acquire the behaviors associated with their profession. This doesn't mean that they are insincere in their actions, although some of course may be. Rather, for most, the performance has simply become part of who they are.
Again, through socialization, some social performances involve little or no conscious thought, as when a soldier salutes an officer automatically, or when a waiter greets patrons in a restaurant, a cultural trait which is not universal. The manner in which different individuals perform a particular role, their role enactment, varies in practice, of course. Other people in a society commonly expect a role to be performed in a particular way, but the person performing it may have their own idiosyncratic performance style, which may either disappoint, shock or please observers. This disjunction between expectations and performance may occur when a role player lacks understanding of what the role requires or is unable to play it effectively. For example, a food service worker with an obvious lack of personal hygiene, an inattentive bus driver or taxi driver who drives dangerously. But on the other hand, it can also occur that a player deliberately chooses not to conform to expectations, as with someone who plays a role for dramatic effect, perhaps treating those he or she interacts with as an audience viewing their performance. For example, a football player who likes to show off to the crowd, a flamboyant university lecturer, or an airline steward who turns the normally boring safety warning before takeoff into an entertainment. In the contemporary world, videos of unusual role enactments are often posted onto social media channels as entertainment. A major factor in describing the impact of social statuses and roles involves the expectations held by other people of the behaviours linked to particular statuses and roles. These expectations in themselves have real social consequences. Thus, not only do we normally expect people in a particular status position to behave in a particular way, but these expectations help define the social reality faced by those in those positions and may deter all but the most minor deviations from the expected norm. We may become shocked when those who occupy the status position do not behave as expected, and all too easily our shock leads to condemnation, evidenced by complaints about negligent mothers who fail to control their children in public, or people who drive or park their cars in a selfish manner and those who push ahead in queues, and so on. Different societies generate different sets of popular peeves, but those who fail to live up to the expectations other people have of certain statuses and roles may face derision, ostracism, or even physical violence. Unsurprisingly, we have much higher expectations of those who hold some statuses than others, with those regarded as moral or religious leaders, and those who have responsibility for the care of children and the lives of others being subjected to particularly high standards. Thus, we expect more of priests, monks, young mothers, school teachers, doctors, nurses and bus drivers than we do of lawyers, company directors, road sweepers and shop assistants. An adulterous priest is condemned far more than an adulterous company director, as is an alcoholic doctor compared with an alcoholic lawyer. A bus driver who causes a road accident may well lose his or her job, but not a shop assistant who commits a similar offence. Also, some jobs, such as being a mother of a small child, or a monk, or a priest, are assumed to be full-time day and night commitments, whilst others operate only during working hours. Note that the role enactment includes behaviours that are not directly related to the instrumental function of the role. For many roles, the expressive style of the performance has become an integral part of social expectations for that particular role. Thus, we expect the bank manager and perhaps also the school teacher to dress in a conservative fashion 
as it enhances the impression that they are responsible custodians of people's wealth and children. Thank you for listening. I hope you like these videos. If you do, uh, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. I'll try to answer any questions you may have about this video in a future one. Uh, by the way, if you want to support the development of the channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal. I'll give details below the video. You can also click the like button so that I can get an idea of which videos are greatest interest to viewers. Have a good day. Oh, uh, next week we'll talk about communication in social interactions. Thank you.